guys. Welcome back to Indie Wrestling Corner with another episode of Wrestling with Positivity. This is a very important project to me that I have been incorporating in my Under the Ropes interviews as well. If you go on the channel, I also have three other editions of Wrestling with Positivity. These are things from fans, parents, wrestlers, referees, promoters, owners, all sorts of people all over the world telling their story with positivity into wrestling because there's so much negative into the world of wrestling. I always like to focus on the positivity and a gift for you guys on Thanksgiving is to be like more thankful for all the stories that you guys got to hear. So amazing. So thank you for everybody who reached out. Thank you for everybody who's told their story. Uh, I hope to continue this project going forward. And yeah, so please enjoy. I'll talk to you guys. I'm Sid Morgan, and for the Wrestling with Positivity project, I wanted to talk about a project that's been really near and dear to my heart, that combines two things I love dearly. So I've been in the wrestling scene for a little while now. Um, I manage the Mighty Bosch, and I wrestle myself as a superhero sidekick. Um, but before that, before all that, by a good decade, I've been working public libraries. And... As a librarian, I get to see these really cool books that come in, including, I started noticing, professional wrestling-themed picture books. There's also comic books and graphic novels for kids and teens, and some of them are just the cutest thing I've ever seen. I absolutely love them. But in particular, the picture books caught my attention because if anything makes professional wrestling, it's the kids. Um, so last year, I reached out to... Uh, T. Phoenix, who runs the Renegade Wrestling Alliance in Rhode Island, and went, so I've got this idea, and I wanted to reach out to the roster and maybe do this as a, you know, RWA Presents thing. And I got this response of, well, funny you should ask that, because it turned out we were already planning to do a fundraising show at a library uh, that following spring. And perfect, this lines up. So we set up a story time to be in the morning the day before the show. So we have something just for the kids and the families in particular, and then the full event later on in the day. Um, and so what I do is I have a, I have a small selection of picture books that are all profes professional wrestling themed. Like I have one of my favorites called Dino Wrestling uh, because dinosaurs, professional wrestling, you can't go wrong. Kids love it. And it's really delightful to see people try to remember how to pronounce dinosaur names. Um, and I bring a couple of professional wrestlers. We're all in full gimmick. Uh, the kids get a couple picture books read to them. It's, it's interactive. They get a small match um, with, where they get to be the referees and the timekeepers. Uh, and they get in on it. And, um, and then we have a craft. Currently, it's a Color Your Own Lucha mask. But I've reached out to uh, a professional wrestler in the area, the Mind Eraser Mike Grasso, who's a very talented artist as well. And he's designing us a uh, pro wrestling story time belt that they can color in and we can do a craft with that instead or in addition to. Um, so I've done this at um, at least a half dozen if not more libraries just in this past year and I've got a bunch lined up in the spring and this uh, starting in January and February actually so late winter into early spring um, and I bring in different wrestlers so they all get a chance to go in and have a really good time and put on a show for these young fans and it's completely oriented towards them and they just light up and the libraries love having us because it's giving them a new way to connect with uh, patrons and families that they might not be getting otherwise so um, yeah it's been really fun and I absolutely love doing it and I'm looking forward to keep doing it. Alright I got one more in me! Everybody! Whoa. Oh. 
Hey, how y'all doing? Hybrid Pro Wrestling's own mouth of the Dirty South, Jake Cobb. I'm now in my eighth year of announcing, and it's been an awesome ride. I've worked with two WWE Hall of Famers. The first being Bullet Bob Armstrong, God rest his soul, that was an awesome man. And another awesome man, Ron Simmons. Now, I know that many of you probably don't think of Ron Simmons as a softy. But he actually is. Um, let me give you a little backstory. Uh, my mama, God rest her soul, she passed in 2004, was a tried and true proud Georgian. She was so proud of her Georgia roots. Uh, she hated sports. In her words, men could find so many more uh, constructive ways to spend their time than chasing an expletive deleted ball. But there was one overriding factor on that. If I was watching a Braves game, if I was watching a Bulldogs game, she'd always ask, is that team from Georgia? And I'd be like, yeah. And she'd say, well, baby, we got to pull for our people. We got to support our people no matter what. Now, I believe it was 2017, maybe 2018, I got to work an anti-bullying show for Solid Rock Championship Wrestling in Thomasville, Georgia. It was a great show. Ron Simmons was the big guest there. And when I was there, you know, I, I visited with him. Great dude, great dude. And I told him that story and told him how she was one of his biggest fans. She loved Ron Simmons. Um, You know, in another link from them, they're both Florida State graduates, so... You know, that, you know, made it pretty special to him, too, because that man loves him some Florida State. So I told him that, and after the show, you know, I went up to thank him for his time. And I went to shake his hand, and uh, he pulled me in, and he said, good working with you, and he gave me a hug. And I went to walk away, and he was still holding my hand, and he pulled me in again, and he hugged me again. And he says, and that's for your sweet mama. I wish I could give one to her. And I just, I never would have expected that out of Ron Simmons, you know. Uh, but he's an awesome guy, and that was an awesome time. And I'm very thankful that I got to share this with all of you. And uh, let's just all enjoy this crazy world of pro wrestling that we love. God bless y'all. All right, so when it comes to this, I got to tell you, the greatest memory I think I could have is the birthday surprise of all time for myself, you know, was back last last year august 2nd on my birthday went out to dinner was thinking it was going to be one of the just a normal regular everyday dinner and then as i walk into applebee's with my with my buddy billy my sister kels and my niece i, I look in a corner and i'm just like like hey billy that dude looks like ryan frost from test of strength wrestling over there I, i'm like i thought it was like a doppelganger or a uh, a stunt double i walk in i'm like dude this dude really really looks like ryan frost i'm like it is Ryan Frost. What's going on here? Apparently, um, apparently my buddy Simon, he set it all up for my birthday. Aww. He he invited Ryan Frost from Test of Strength Wrestling to come out for my birthday dinner to, as the biggest surprise in the world. And Ryan Frost also brought with him Alex Rojas from Test of Strength Wrestling, which was really, really cool. So it was really, really surreal, awesome experience just for – so many things because I've never had something special done like that for me before in my life. And like, you know, being a lifelong wrestling fan for since 1994, to just have two people that I really love seeing at shows just come out for my birthday. Just, it blew me away. And the whole time I was sitting there, I just could never stop thinking about it the whole time. I actually still have the photo right here. I don't know if you could really see or not, Aww. you know, so, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was uh, it was one of the most special moments of my life. Like the funniest part is, I I couldn't even like keep keep my composure the whole time. I was sitting there for like two three minutes, and I'm just I couldn't focus on eating my burger. I couldn't focus on eating at all. I was just sitting there. I kept looking down. I'm looking at my friend and my my niece, my three year old niece, and I'm just like, this this is not real. Like how is these guys that I've been watching in the ring for a while now on in the Indies like literally sitting here eating dinner with me like it's it's insane. So 
Oh, I love that. But that's just like, you know, your support alone just from going to these shows continuously supporting making signs. He's the sign guy uh, pretty much. And just like a give back. And that that's special. Like that. That's really special. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> no How I got into indie wrestling was around February of 2020. So right before everything shut down. So that was a fun time to, like, now get into independent wrestling. And I always was known in that realm as the Orange Cassidy girl. Because that was my thing, was I dressed as him. And then I was like, how can I make this into something? It's like I just dressed as, like, a lot of independent wrestlers. Um, ranging from Bryce Donovan to De Desmond Coles. Me, what's next? Like, am I next? Like, what's next? Um, so that's really fun of how wrestling, like, I don't know, helps me mm -hmm. in that way of like, oh, this cool creative thing that everyone likes and it's just awesome. Like, um, Dante Drago, I bought three paddles from him and then I made him a paddle. <laughs> And he liked it so much, he asked me to sign it and date it. So now he just has that somewhere and that he's not given away because that's something I made. Um, and this past cat show in um, Melville, I bought Aaron Rourke's, Rourke's jacket because, I don't know, I wanted it. But also, the way that conversation was, he was so sweet about it. He was like, I'll hold it for you. And, and like, I don't know. It just made me really happy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh. there, there was another um, one, too, like, right, about, like, the birthday party, right, that they did oh, for yeah. you. You got to share that one. Yeah. Um... Yeah. It was my 21st birthday, and I went to VPW show um, for my birthday, and I was supposed to do something cool with um, Dante Drago at the time, um, and I was told that night that plans fell through and something else was happening, so I couldn't do my cool thing with Dante. Um, but when Dante came out, I, he felt bad because we're like friends and he like felt bad that he like, I don't know, let me down when really he didn't. Like, I was like, cool, you do your thing and I'll do mine. Um, so he gave me a hug as he did his entrance. Meanwhile, he's like trying to be this tough heel <laughs> persona. And then he's given a fan a hug <laughs> on their birthday. <laughs> so like I thought, I thought that was sweet, and I saw like pictures later. I'm like, like that was cool. Yeah, that's helped you out a it's, lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, wrestling has helped me out a lot. Like I found it when I was 10 years old, and now I'm 22 and dressing as wrestlers and spending a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but they appreciate it. <laughs> They, they all look they do appreciate. Yeah. They do appreciate it, and it's fun. Like, when I dressed as Phil, he was telling me... He was had people come up to me and asking him if he saw me. That's what he tells me. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> like, which one's which? Said, which one? Which one's Apparently, which? I was a better Phil than Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and now I got Max Caster asking me, when am I dressing as him? Ooh. And I'm like, Max... Caster, AEW Trios Champion. So I'm just over the moon. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Any other stories you want to share? <sighs> hmm. I don't know. It's just been really helpful, independent wrestling, and seeing like all the guys and girls that I've like kind of made friendships with 
acquaintances mm -hmm. based on what I do mm -hmm. and how much they appreciate it. And it's just really cool. Um, and hopefully next year I um, start my training yeah. to become an independent wrestler or manager, whatever. We shall see. So something. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> awesome. We'll see. This year I had the opportunity to catch up with a good friend of mine and legendary wrestler, Lenny Pavo. Started out as a regular, catching up, becoming the Mega Powers Volume 2.0, and then heading out to get some great grub at a diner to him wanting to find sneakers, which became an adventure in itself. So it was Roosevelt Field Mall getting Orange Julius, looking for sneakers, and coming to Shoe Department Warehouse where we actually found sneakers for him. And it became a impromptu karaoke concert in my car following many, many songs of Billy Joel. Unfortunately, the next day we lost Lainey. But I still have that memory in my head of a great friend, a great wrestler, and someone who was so, so honored, privileged, and happy to see his fans along with his brother's fans all together to honor the man. Just thinking about it still tugs at my heart because again, it was an untimely death, but I'm gonna take my memories that I had with Lainey and hold them dearly. And I know that heaven gained a genius and Randy has his brother back. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Harry Davila. I am the promoter for BST Wrestling. And I have a couple stories to tell. My good friend Tiffany asked me if I wanted to be a part of this Wrestling With Positivity project and I jumped at the, at the possibility of being a part of this. Um, I've only been in wrestling but a short amount of time, about four years. And in those four years, I have so many stories that I can tell. But I only have two that I really want to share today. The first one is the United By One project. Now, normally in wrestling, you see all these companies, you know, and it's almost like dog eat dog world. You know, everybody's out for themselves. You know, it, it, no one really wants to join in and, and help other prom promoters grow and stuff like that. But not here, not in Connecticut. And what I've gotten to see with this United by One project is a bunch of companies coming together for one cause, showing that we can all eat off the same table. Now with the United by One project, um, that is our fight towards type one diabetes. We team up with JDRF and we donate a good proceeds from the event to help that fight. Companies like Tetsu Pro, Tessa Strength, Coliseum Pro, We Are Wrestling, from uh, podcasters like PWZ, photographers like Smooth Lens and Phantasm Pro all coming together to join against one fight towards type 1 diabetes. And I'd say... We've off to a successful start as we continue to do this yearly. The other one is my daughter's gender reveal. Um, this one's a more personal story. Um, I've gotten to know Lucas, Jason, Jordan, and Roe, I, I would say, very well over the last few years. And when my fiance and I were discussing how we were going to reveal it to the world that we were having a daughter... The best way I thought of was professional wrestling, of course. So I made a few phone calls, got a ring to my backyard, and I asked two gentlemen, Lucas, Chase, and Jordan Rowe, if they would like to join in 
and help us in revealing what I was having. Without hesitation, they both jumped on. And immediately I knew that they, these guys would be like family going forward. Um, and we ended up having an amazing time. Uh, the whole family was elated. They had a seven minute absolute scrap in my backyard and I couldn't be happier. Um, to say that I fell in love more with wrestling that night would be an understatement. I love professional wrestling and I hope that these things, kind of like the two that I discussed, happen more often. We should all be coming together. As the title of the project says, Wrestling With Positivity. We should have each other's back on this. I love you all. Stay positive. I am the GMX Alex Rojas. I am the general manager of Test of Strength Wrestling, the general manager of the Bell Time Club, uh, the founder of Legacy is Timeless and Heal Shit Apparel. I'm also the representative for the number one dojo and Ichiban on MLW. Um, the story that I want to share with you is actually a, a real, real, real personal one. Um, a lot of my friends and family finally know uh, that for the better part of the last two years, I've been fighting cancer. And uh, it was one of those things that I kept to myself. You know, um, I don't know if it's a male ego thing or just a plain survival instinct where I always keep things to myself, uh, personal things. Uh, but, you know, it got to the point where I was just too sick to hide it. And, uh, and I had to let people know just in case one day I had to walk away. Um, and, you know, a lot of my guys, I mean, you know, Flash and Kai and Ichi and Sammy. And, you know, they, they, these, these are my kids. They're not just my friends. They're not just my students. You know, we're a big family. Um, so I, feel, I felt like I owed it to them to let them know what I was going through. And uh, to my surprise, the entire wrestling community came together for me. Um, last December... Uh, we did a show called Real Recognize Heal, and it was uh, it was a, a, a cancer benefit in my honor. Um, we had 14 promotions join um, and come together, and then and nobody asked me for a dime. No one, uh, no one would accept their rate. No one would would, you know, everybody dropped everything that were doing that they were doing to be there for me. You know, um, BST, who you, who you talked about, Harry. Um, PAPW, PVP, uh, Wrestling Open, House of Glory, uh, you know, all, all of these different promotions came together and sent me their best talents, and we had one of the most amazing wrestling shows of all time, um, and uh, it was an amazing thing that they put together for me, you know, and uh, and my baby girl, the GMS, that girl CC, held it down and, and was the MC for the night, the GM, put everything together, so it was the first time I was ever at a show, and I, I wasn't running it. It was different. It was it was such a big moment. So to see all of them come together, and um, and do that for me, you know, it, it's touching because they didn't just show up. You know, they showed up and showed out. I had top to bottom probably the best professional wrestling card I've ever seen. Um, all of the boys showed up and just gave me amazing matches. I mean, my main event was Sammy Diaz versus Alec Price. You know, it was it was insane. Um, the the things that that happened that night I'll, I'll never forget you know um and I'm, I'm forever grateful and not only did they do it for me that night but earlier this year they did it for me again um for the launch of legacy is timeless they turned it into a benefit show the lituation was a benefit show and uh, and if you go on on at lit pro wrestling on youtube you get to see an amazing 10 match card with another slew of promotions that came together we had seven title matches Spanning the best talents in New England. Uh, the main event was Alec Price versus Ichiban versus Channing Thomas. I had Mike Skyros versus Sammy Diaz. I had, um, you know, it was just it was it was just so amazing. Uh, you know, Miracle Generation against Counter Strike. It was it was jam packed from top to bottom, and these boys went out there and and, and tore it up. Um, and again, they they wouldn't accept a dime from me. They wouldn't let me pay them. They did it out of the love, you know. Um, and it's one of those things that, you know, if I was gone tomorrow, I leave with a smile, you know, with a proud dad, you know, with just swollen chest, um, so much gratitude, so much appreciation, and uh, and I love to see where they're at, and I and I, I love to see where they're going, you know, all of these guys have such an amazing future, and um, 
I know the legacy's in good hands. You know, I know Walter would be proud of these boys. And uh, I, I just can't wait to see them in places that I'd never imagined visiting, you know, doing things that I could have never imagined happening because they do that every single day. Um, Flash and Kai have a, a, a big part of my heart because they were really close to Big Jim Anderson, who was one of my best friends who passed away. And uh, and I love it when they come out to the ring because every time they come out to the ring, I get to hear my friend's voice. You know, Jim sings their song. And uh, I swell up with pride every time. And those boys leave it all on the line every single match because they do it for him too, you know. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I know that uh, wrestling gets a lot of negative press. We get a lot of... Uh, you know, any time one little thing goes wrong, they want to blame us all for everything. But you guys don't understand the camaraderie, the family, the love that's actually here. Um, you know, we really are one big family. And uh, and what I try to teach my boys is that when we say brother to each other, it's supposed to mean something. And we do that. And it's a beautiful thing. I am Matt Griffin. I uh, am a former professional wrestler, mostly retired. But uh, for the last five and a half years... I have been the promoter and CEO of Action Wrestling based out of Georgia. Uh, I'm also one of the creative minds behind the Scenic City Invitational. And um, a few years ago, well, let me start with, I am a volunteer with Make-A-Wish. I've volunteered with Make-A-Wish Georgia for over a decade. And uh, I'm fairly well known in Make-A-Wish. They know that I'm into wrestling and I do shows and events. They had a child um, a few years back who wanted to become a pro wrestler. And, you know, for certain limitations, certain organizations weren't, you know, going to be able to do everything. Well, he wanted to actually be a pro wrestler. He had a lot of physical limitations. Um, and But Tyler was absolutely adamant about what he wanted to do. And he is the... Uh, He's such a, a great kid. He does have, I won't get into it, but he does have some physical issues. So he can't, he can't bump. He can't go ahead and do a, uh, do a whole lot. But we were able to ascertain and figure out what he could do. Um, and once we decided that he would be able to do enough, um, myself and my friend Al Getz, um, we decided that we could do this and help Tyler become a professional wrestler. So... What happened is uh, probably the best thing I'll ever do in pro wrestling and one of the best things I'll ever do as a, uh, as a person as well. Al signed a manager contract with Tyler and brought him um, all sorts of videos or recruiting videos for pro wrestling schools. Uh, we enlisted several different people out there to make videos saying to why Tyler should come and train. We had, uh, for example, we had Danny Cage send us a video. It's like, ah, oh, Danny, yeah, you should come. You should come. I'm Danny Cage. You come train at the Monster Factory. Uh, we had Kerry Awful uh, ask him to come train at uh, Crux and a couple other videos. And uh, we chose, Al chose um, the One Fall Power Factory, which is, uh, which is a school that is now better known as the Nightmare Factory. And QT Marshall uh, was the was the head trainer at the time, and uh, we were able to go there. QT Marshall will always have my respect for this. Uh, he helped Tyler become a pro wrestler and did a uh, did a day long kind of clinic on things that he could do. There was no bumping, there was nothing that was going to injure him, but he learned how to lock up. He learned how to do some uh, some basic standing holds like arm ringers um, and we found out what he wanted to do for a finish was, which was the uh, rings of Saturn, which was great because it was a submission. He just kind of sit down with, and if you're trained, you could kind of almost put yourself into position and QT got a uh, guest trainer that day by the name of Cody Rhodes, who had just come off of a, I believe red eye from Las Vegas and uh, spent a whole ton of time with Tyler. Um, we also had, uh, Cody Vance, now known as Preston Vance, who spent a lot of time with him, helping train him that day. So, uh, so the Nightmare Factory and uh, those guys have a uh, my eternal gratitude for helping Tyler become a pro wrestler. 
But that was only one part of it. That's only one part of being a pro wrestler, of course, is doing the training. He needed to actually have a show. So I had a show. Uh, I had a, uh, a wrestling show. And before it, we had a special event just for Tyler. He decided he wanted his wrestling name to be Supernova. So we had a friend make gear. He had pants and a vest that were uh, Supernova themed. That was his name. And Believe it or not, he said he liked uh, Nova, of course, from Nova. But the Super actually was not from Supernova as well. That was from Super Crazy. Uh, he's a 18-year-old kid whose references date back to my heyday. Uh, he watched tons of ECW, for example. He watched WCW stuff from the 90s. So he knew all of these guys, and his recollection was much better than mine ever was. So... Uh, we did a show at 3 p.m. the same day as an action, normal action wrestling show, February 2019, and Make-A-Wish Georgia helped bring out a ton of volunteers. Uh, we had a lot of action wrestling fans and my friends show up early to help create this atmosphere for him. And he had to run the gauntlet. This was what we sold to him, a uh, graduation event. So he had to go ahead and do everything. Uh, for example, he he rang he had to ring the bell. He had to learn how to help put on shows. He wanted to do commentary, so he did commentary on a couple matches. This is a show we fully we fully taped. It's it's not available to the public, but uh, I had several wrestlers who came in early on a show day and just really gave their time to help make this a special event. So Tyler rang. He was a bell ringer. He did commentary. Uh, we even did, we had somebody who's uh, very good on the microphone uh, and showed up a little bit late, did a promo battle with him. So we got to go ahead and have Tyler, a.k.a., sorry, Supernova. Supernova won a promo battle, a promo battle with AC Mack. Um, and uh, we had a few other things. We had him make the save, the Make-A-Wish CEO. I told him to get into the ring and say a couple things. And immediately I had one of my heels come out. Supernova made the save and, and, uh, and gave him a chop. And the wrestler went flying. And it was, it was, uh, uh, it was very special. Um, and now came time. We had Supernova at ringside managing one of his favorite wrestlers with Al Getz and unfortunately they lost and somebody else won the World International Super Heavyweight Championship wish and started talking about it I'm trying to be vague with names because I uh, this was a private event and we talked to the wrestlers about it. we wanted to be them to be able to be really out of character and not do anything so I'm I'm trying to be very vague with Big, big with names. Suffice it to say, it was the action wrestling roster in early 2019 who was on this. And uh, the particular wrestler who'd won won the Wish Championship and started talking about how the best wrestler in this country, best wrestler in the world, best wrestler in the universe. And Al stops him. He's like, "Whoa, did you say you're the best wrestler in the universe? Well, I've got a guy here, and he's calling for Supernova, and he gets Supernova in the ring." Now, this was sort of a shoot because Supernova, going into the show, didn't really know what he was going to be doing. Um, he, We didn't smarten him up to certain things. The wrestler he was going to be wrestling, we had him, oh, yeah, go ahead and show him how, how you, you do this. Okay, make sure, hey. So we made it like he was testing him out so that the wrestler could see how he would do it and how he would need to work around Tyler. And... So when he gets announced, when Al says, it's like, you know, I want you to challenge him, Supernova's finding this out for the very first time as well. So he goes in there, and they have a, a couple-minute match where one of my wrestlers bumps around him, and he's an absolute king. Um, I jumped in the ring, too, just to make sure, with the referee, just to make sure that everything would be okay. And then he, uh, he locks him into the rings of Saturn. Supernova goes, like, points right at the fans and the camera and he was really he was really hamming it up and uh he won he uh and he won we gave him a belt um his family i don't think knew that he was getting a belt or exactly what was going to happen on the show um 
but it was a uh, it was just a real special event and I think I shared uh, an article with you Tiffany mm -hmm. um, I saved one of the posters from this and everyone's getting a good look at my bedroom but I saved a couple of the posters from this some of the fans made a supernova poster oh. and uh, his real name is Tyler and so they made of course so Tyler Super number one, number number one. I saved these posters from that uh, from that show because it was just such a special event to me. And he was the undefe he was the undefeated wish superhero uh, or uh, world international super heavyweight champion. And I get a little touched when I think about it. I do have the video from that show we we taped the whole show and and made it available to him and i get a little touched up and when i have a when i have a bad day i go to certain things on that video and watch just his whole show as he's getting his pro wrestling dream uh he gets to realize it and um, you know it was i always think you should give back um I've never been impressed with people who are selfish or have the ability to do for others and they just, and they won't. And, you know, I've had a, I've had a relationship with make a wish granting wishes for a decade. I've been able to send kids to Disney world on cruises, uh, France, Australia, Japan. Um, I've gone with, um, I've gone with kids to meet sports teams, and yes, I've done several WWE wishes all the way up to the very top of WWE, and this was the most special wish that I've ever done by far. It was uh, unique. We got to add a lot of little touches to it, and his parents, um, you know, they were they were grateful. They got to bring some of his family, and it was kind of nice because we we had their trust with what was going to happen on the actual wish show because we didn't smarten them up. We didn't exactly tell them what was going to happen. And it was, uh, it'll, it's, it's the, it's the most special event. It's the best event I'll ever, I'll ever run. I mean, I could book a stadium show with 80,000 people and it won't be any more special than the supernova show was. So I hope you listened. I appreciate you listening. And just my lesson out of that would be it's just so personally rewarding when you're able to help people and give back. And I think that's um, I think that's just a special thing we have in the sport of pro wrestling where we have so many kids and so many people who are just huge fans. And it takes so little to really just give them such an incredible experience and a huge memory. I am miserable.